everyone. I am live and I hope you can see me and hear me. I'm Debbie Dews here from Home Pressure Cooking. I'm going to give you all a minute or two to jump in and wait for our lovely moderators, Linda and Gail of the group here. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I'm really looking forward to um, doing a live demo of a big Mac attack that I did in my Ninja Foodie. If you're not familiar with the Ninja Foodie, I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. I am in no way affiliated with them or work for them or anything like that. But I have to say, I do really love the Ninja Foodie for more reasons than one. Uh, for one thing, it does everything all in one unit. You can bake, you can air fry, you can dehydrate, you can broil. What else can you do in here? Um, saute, as I'm doing now. Um, today I'm sharing a Big Mac that I'm going to make in the Ninja Foodie. You can do this in your air fryer as well. Um, there'll be a little tweaks, which I will talk about what to do if you do decide to make this in your air fryer. I'm using a seven inch pan, okay? It's a spring form pan that I carry in my line, home pressure cooking. And it also comes with a bunt portion of the pan that if you wanted to make some pretty cakes or French toast, um, whatever you really want. I've even made meatloaf using the bump portion and then put mashed potatoes in the middle and it looks really nice when you're serving. So for this Big Mac recipe, let me tell you what inspired me first with this recipe. I saw on Facebook a couple weeks ago, there was a salad going around and it was a Big Mac salad and it was, you know, lower fat and everything. And I thought, wow, I could probably make a version of that in the Instant Pot, the Air Fryer, or the Ninja Foodie, or even my oven if I wanted. Hi there, welcome. Debbie Dews here from Home Pressure Cooking. Just so y'all know, any questions that you have for me after my live video, I will go back and answer them all and read them, okay? I can't actually see that far, so I see that people are on, um, but I'm just seeing, you know, kind of a blur, so. But I will be sure that I answer y'all, okay? And, and thank you for joining me. And thank you to Linda and her wonderful air fryer tips and talk group and Gail for organizing this for me to come in. So, all right, as I mentioned, I am using the Ninja Foodie and it does everything all in one, all right? Now apparently they came out with new colors too, which, you know, like the Instant Pot, they came out with new designs and new colors. They all do the same, so it really doesn't matter. I will stick to my, my gray and black one. But the first thing I'm doing is sauteing about one pound of um, grass-fed organic beef. You could use any beef that you want for this recipe. I like to use the organic. Now, one thing about the Ninja Foodie, the liner is ceramic, okay? It comes in two sizes, a six and a half quart and an eight quart. Apparently the only difference is the eight quart is a little taller, so it can maybe fit a larger whole chicken or whole turkey breast if you wanted. Um, I find that the six and a half quart is suffice for my family. I, I usually cook for, four, well, there's four in my family, but one is off to college, so I only have one younger one at home, but he eats enough for like three people. So I would say, for a family of six, the six and a half quart is just fine. The liner is ceramic, which is a great feature for cooking in it and cleaning. However, it scratches very easily. So I use my spurtles, um, which come in a set of four, and I'm actually giving away a set here in the group for y'all. All right, and spurtles are an old Scottish tool um, that they used way back when to stir porridge, and soups, uh, just to get an even consistency. Each one does a little different purpose. Like these two, you can serve as a salad serving, and they're slightly curved and sexy, so you could use it as a spatula as well. I love using it in my foodie because I can stir all around and I'm not going to scratch my pot. All right, so why this meat is sauteing, 
I'm using a yellow onion that I diced up real small, okay? And I'm just gonna throw that in the pot and get it a little caramelized. You only need a few ingredients for this Big Mac, one of which is the one pound of ground beef, any kind you want. You're gonna use hamburger, dill pickles. You're going to use tortilla shells, which I didn't bring them out, so I have to go grab those. Um, Thousand Island dressing, which I guess, you know, is the secret sauce, but you can make one homemade. I don't know how I'm cheating and just using the dressing. Um, I wanna make sure that y'all can see me, so I'm gonna go towards the camera and just give me a thumbs up that you can see me clear. If you want me to tilt the pot down right now as I'm sauteing, or if you would rather see me visually, just let me know. I'm gonna come closer, okay? And then I'm gonna grab my tortilla shells. You're welcome, Carol. Thank you, Linda. Good, I'm glad I'm organized. Everyone can see me okay? Just give me a thumbs up, tap the hearts. I'm gonna grab my tortilla shells. Okay, so these are just basic flour tortillas, soft shell for fajitas. They fit perfect in the seven inch springform pan. So we're gonna layer the Big Mac all the way to the top and uh, that'll be fun for you guys to watch how simple this is. Your family will absolutely love this. Um, if you like Big Macs, which I haven't had one in like 20 years to be honest with you, I was a huge fan of them back in the day, but, um, you know, now that I'm a little bit older, if I ate a Big Mac, I'd look like a Big Mac, so. But you can also, in this pan, you can make lasagnas, you can make, of course, cheesecake, you can make um, taco pies, fajita pies. There's so many versatile things that you can make, and this pan fits in most all air fryers. I have a Phillips air fryer, I believe it's a 3.2, and this pan fits perfectly in there, and it's one of the smallest air fryers, so I have no doubt that the seven inch will fit in your basket perfectly, and you'll love it. You'll use it so much and for so many recipes. So basically you just want to cook this up, get it, like I said, the onions caramelized. I'm going to season the meat just a little bit. I'm going to use some fresh ground pepper and some salt. That's all the seasoning you need because you're basically going to get most of it from the dressing, the pickles, the cheese. I'm using sharp cheddar cheese. Um, if you want to make this a low-fat version, you can certainly use low-fat cheese. And um, this is actually Thousand Island light, so it's not, it's not too bad. One gram of fat per two tablespoons. So, yeah, load it on. And sugar-wise, seven grams. Not bad. Also, the secret to this recipe, believe it or not, are the little sesame seeds. You know how on a Big Mac? You have two whole beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, onion, pickle on a sesame seed bun. Now I'm gonna have y'all singing that song all day. But yeah, the sesame seeds really just add to the whole recipe. They're a little pricey, but you don't need a whole lot of them. And they'll last you a while, and you can use them for other recipes like, you know, chicken and other yummy things, I'm sure. All right, so the meat is almost brown. I'm gonna show you the inner liner and then I'll tilt you back up. I have y'all set up on a tripod. Love how inclusive you are, thank you. You can cook the ground beef on the stove, of course. Yes, you can cook the ground beef on the stove just like you would in your frying pan. Can you guys see inside the pot a little better now? Just want you to see the liner. It is so easy to clean. 
and saute, no mess. What I love most about it is that you don't get grease splattering all over your stove. There's nothing worse than that. And if you don't go back and clean it right away, you know how slimy that gets. And this really takes no time to saute. Can you see? And initially I'm just gonna work right out of the pot and then I'm gonna wipe it down and we'll put our tortilla pie in. Thanks y'all again for joining me. Debbie Dew is here from Home Pressure Cooking. It is my pleasure to be here with you. I haven't done a Facebook Live in a while, so pardon me if I'm a little nervous and skipping and jumping over my words. That, that can happen when you're live for, you know, over 20 people is a lot to me, so. All right, so I am going to go wash my hands because I got a little oil on them. I'm gonna grab the rag and we're gonna get to step two. just kick this right off all right now on the ninja foodie there are not many buttons at all I'm gonna go through what the functions are okay you have a dehydrate which I have not used yet but in my group ninja foodies I have noticed quite a few um, people have used the dehydrate and they love it all right then there's the sear and the saute which this is the mode I'm on now and you can do it a high a medium or a low which is a nice feature I had it on um, high, medium. And then, of course, there is your broil option if you want to get something at the end. The Ninja Foodie comes with two lids, all right? You have one lid that is for pressure cooking, and it looks just like the, you know, Instapot lid. It has the inner seal, same, same exact concept. But the beauty of the Ninja Foodie is it has this lid that is a permanent fixture and when you want to get something brown and and bubbly and you know just like you would in the oven you put that lid down and you would just hit your temperatures either bake or air crisp to whatever time and temperature you want this is very similar obviously to our air fryers okay same concept except you can do a lot more with the ninja like I said, I do not work for them. I'm just telling you how much I love it. It's pretty darn awesome. All right, so let's get to step two now. Now, I did line my pan with parchment paper. You don't have to. I just do it for easy cleanup and easy serving, and it's really nice, all right? But it's not a necessity. You can also just cut some parchment paper to fit. I do also do a little spray butter, just a little, on the bottom, okay? And this is where the layering is gonna come in. Can everybody see what I'm doing? Just wanna make sure you get a good visual and you don't miss a thing. Believe me, it goes a lot quicker if you're not yip yip and in between like I am. You, you can whip this together in like less than 10 minutes and then cook it for less than 10, really. Okay, good. All right, so the tortilla shells fits perfectly on the bottom, as you see, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is layer the bottom just with a little bit of the Thousand Island. Okay, I'm gonna use a brush just to spread it evenly and don't worry about how messy you get because it's all going to to cook evenly and spread out all right I'll just put that right here so that's it 
Okay, then you're gonna take your meat and your onions. And we are going to layer the bottom. Hopefully you have the Big Mac song in your head. You can sing it for me. I want to laugh because when I first made this, my son, who is 17, who, you know, they think they know everything at that age, he said, Mom, this is so good, but it's missing one thing. And I said, what? He said, ketchup. And I said, really, dude? I, apparently you don't know the McDonald's Big Mac song. And I sang it to him and he said, oh. I was like, I owned him that day, didn't I? All right, so the meat, the cheese. I'm using a sharp cheddar. Just going to sprinkle it on. Do that. The pickles. Now, if you don't like a lot of pickles, don't use a lot of pickles. I usually use about probably five per layer and just spread them out as even as you can. There was a small one in there, so there's that. And then we're gonna top it with sesame seeds, each layer. And a little bit more dressing, just a little, and you don't have to brush that, you're just gonna kinda lightly go over it. All right, next tortilla, same thing. I press down as I go to make it as flat as possible. And we're gonna do the same exact thing until we get to the very top of the Big Mac. The reason I like to put the dressing on the bottom is because, you know, tortillas can be a little bit dry. Plus, if you recall, a Big Mac, they certainly did not chintz on the, on the special sauce, I should say. Meat. Cheese. Any questions y'all have, I definitely will come on after the live and answer anything and everything, okay? I appreciate you tuning in on this Saturday afternoon. I don't know how your weather is here or there, but here it is quite miserable. We haven't seen the sun in South Carolina in about two whole weeks. So what do we do? We cook comfort food. Sesame seeds, just a little more. Now when this is all finished, I shred some lettuce at the end after it's cooked, top it with the lettuce and then some more Thousand Island. And I am not kidding you when I tell you this taste, oh, I gotta put my Thousand Island just like a Big Mac. You just will die over it. Kids love it. Adults love it. Everyone loves it. We are almost done. I think we'll be able to get a five layer. I think I have, what, three in there? Yeah. The last layer might be a little chintzier. That's okay, I'll just add more cheese. More cheese, please. Now, if you were doing this just straight up in your air fryer, do it exactly the way I'm teaching you today. Now what I would do, because you only have a bake function, or crisp, whatever model you have, I would probably do it on 300 
for maybe 10 minutes because your meat is already cooked. So it's just basically getting, you know, your cheese all melted in there and, you know, infusing your flavors. And I think that's all you would need for your air fryer. Um, now I've only done it in the pressure cooker method of the Ninja Foodi. And then what I do is at the end of it, I added more cheese and then I put um, it on bake just to get it a little more bubbly. So either way, you're good to go. Now that one, they chinsed out on me. Look how small that is. See, you never know what these things get a bigger one. I swear everything is shrinking, including me. Well, height wise, that's about it. The rest of me, tell you since you since I cook so much now I really do have to be careful as most of us do after the age of 50 but I try to balance it with making keto recipes and Weight Watcher recipes I have quite a variety on my website home pressure cooking um, that certainly will appeal to to most everyone because I have a little bit of everything because I've cooked a little bit of everything so as you see the one pound of meat worked out pretty perfect get every last drop that's what I love about the spurtles too you can get around the diameter of your pan and get pretty much every last drop. We don't want to waste anything. All right. Cheese. More pickles. My son is going to be extremely happy when he comes home today. He's at a a region band uh, gathering today, so he'll be home shortly and he'll be starving. So he'll be happy to have this Big Mac. So will I. All right, last layer. And that's all we're going to do. I'm going to put just a little bit of dressing on top so it doesn't dry out. And then I'm going to add some sesame seeds. All right, and now it's ready for the pot. I'm going to tilt the camera up. I'm going to go rinse this out, and I'm going to check in and see what y'all have to say. tilt you back up. What's cooking over there? Air fryer is coming. Please be patient. He'll love, oh, you bet he will. Okay. Yes, the air fryer is coming, y'all. Food wasn't made in a day. Well, yes it was if you have air fryers and instant pots. to wipe out. I have my pan on a trivet and I'm going to lower it in the foodie. All right. I'm going to close the air fryer lid and I'm going to do it at 300 for about 10 minutes. So I'm going to hit start. We're going to hit bake. It automatically comes on 375, but I'm going to kick it down to 300, and I'm going to do my time for 10 minutes. 
And then once that's up, I will add more cheese to it. I will remove it or let it melt for just a second. I can even just close the lid back up and the cheese will automatically melt. I will remove it. I will let that cool for just a moment and release the springform pan, shred up some lettuce, add more Thousand Island, and uh, we have our Big Mac attack. Like I said, it usually goes a lot quicker if I'm not talking and I was trying to go slow so y'all could see everything that I was doing. And I hope that you enjoyed the presentation. And I want to thank Linda and Gail, and I see Amy, the other admin, came in to help the ladies answer any questions. And I'm going to come back and read everything. Uh, but I am Debbie Dews here from Home Pressure Cooking, and I sure appreciate you tuning in. And I hope you learned a little something. If you're thinking about the Ninja Foodie air fryer pressure cooker, this gives you a little bit of an idea of what it does um, and more. If not, enjoy your regular air fryer. You can do most every recipe just the same, except obviously, you know, your meats and things like that are different than pressure cooking because they're not as fast and they don't turn out as tender. So anyway, thanks again for joining me. I am going to go back in the thread and read everything. The complete recipe I did leave in the link here of the title. Um, you will note that I did it in the pressure cooker though. So today I demonstrated it all in the air fryer, okay? So if you were gonna make this, just do it the way I said. You know, first you'll have to saute your meat on your stove and then um, layer your pan and do it step by step, all right? Thank you. See y'all later. Thanks again for tuning in. You're very welcome. See y'all later.